Hey everyone, welcome to Up All Night DIY. I'm Monica. Thanks for joining me. Today's the Power Up Collab, hosted by Sarah of Ken Sarah DIY and Zena of OK at Home. This collab is to encourage women to pick up their power tools and create something they love. Also, you could win an Amazon gift card. All you have to do is like and comment the secret word from each video on the playlist. You must be a U.S. resident. Last date to enter is March 18th, 2022. The winner will be announced on March 19th, 2022 on Ken Sarah DIY It's YouTube channel community tab and at Ken Sarah DIY It Instagram. All information will be in the description box. Today, I'm making this light up shamrock. Let's get into it. I've designed my shamrock, made my pattern, which I'll trace onto half inch sanded plywood. I'm sure to mark all the holes where the lights will go. Over to the scroll saw to cut it out. First, I'll cut away the excess wood and I'll save that for another project. Now, I'll just follow the lines of my pattern, letting the blade do all the work. I'll push very gently so as not to snap the blade, especially on my turns. Something to keep in mind is that the blade will deflect to the heavier side. So in this case, most of my wood is to the left of the blade. With this in mind, it helps me keep my blade on my line. Right here, I had to tighten my tension bar. You can usually feel when you need more tension, the blade will feel loose as you cut. When I make pieces this big, I'll cut away any excess and then I'll come in from another angle. Just picking up where I left off really, I'll get my blade right back on the line. Due to all the turns and whatnot in this particular design, I'm jumping forward because a lot of it is just really time consuming and I don't want the video to be extra long. And now I'll punch the light holes with my drill press. I line my holes up with the drill bit, turn on the press, and turn the crank until the bit passes completely through the wood. And I'll move around my piece until each hole is punched. I also cut a one by two to 18 inches and one at six inches with my miter saw. But I didn't get that on camera. I didn't realize the camera had shut off. These pieces will make up my stand. Everything has been sanded and wiped clean. I'll trace little shamrocks here at the bottom. And I'll draw a border around my shamrock. I want my lights on the inside of that border line. With Ceramco Kelly Green, I'll base coat the shamrock, leaving a raw border edge. I'll give it two coats. I paint the little shamrocks with Americana Irish Moss.
With a small flat brush and white paint, I'll stripe the large shamrock by holding the brush vertically so that only the very tip of the brush meets the shamrock surface. Since this is a rustic piece, I really don't mind if the lines are wonky. It adds a bit of character. Ceram coat palmetto stripes will go next to the weight. Then, Americana Irish moss stripes, that's hard to say, next to the palmetto. The small shamrocks will get a white plaid effect with just intersecting white lines. And I'm using the same flat brush that I did on the large shamrock stripes, except this time I'm using it horizontally and not vertically. I mean, you can see. I'll shade the large shamrock with hunter green and floating medium. I dip my brush into the medium, working it into the bristles. I'll side load by scooping some of the paint onto the corner of my brush, and then I'll stroke it on my plate to get the gradient of color, and this will give me that ombre effect. With the paint side of my brush positioned on the edge of the shamrock, I'll shade completely around the shamrock, reloading my brush as needed. I shade the small shamrocks with Kelly Green. With dark chocolate, I'll shade the edge of the border. Right along here, I'll just follow the penciled in border with my paint. I'll also add an outline around the small shamrocks too. With my liner brush and dark chocolate, I'll add some Celtic swirls around the small shamrocks. You know, to fill in that little gap there with some cuteness.
I'm out of antiquing medium, so I'll make up a stain with Joe Sonia Gel Retarder Medium and Ceram Coat Brown Velvet. I mix it up right on my plate and brush it on and wipe it off. I'll stain my entire piece. I'll spray it with a clear matte sealer. To make the stand, first I'll line up my 18 inch 1x2 with the bottom of the shamrock. I'll place the 6 inch piece perpendicular and I'll mark where I want that to go. With wood glue, I'll adhere it into place. I drill pilot holes on either side of the smaller piece and then I'll mark where I want my hinge to go. This is just a regular old utility hinge. I drill pilot holes for the hinge. I use one and a half inch screws to add extra support to that cross brace. I drill small pilot holes, one on the side of the 18 inch 1x2 and one right next to it on the shamrock. I'll use eye screws here. I want them to line up like this. I fix the hinge with half inch screws. I'll use a length of craft wire to attach the two eye screws. I'll wrap it around the one on the shamrock first, and then I'll connect it to the one on the leg and just curve the end into a hook. I like to make these hinged backers. The wire keeps the leg in place while it's on display, and the fact that you can collapse it makes it so much easier to store. To embellish the front, I'll twist together some of these Pitberry sprigs. To make my bow, I fold my ribbon over itself, like this. I pinch the center and twist a wire around it. I'm struggling a bit here. And this wire just did not want to cooperate. I cut off the excess. Then I'll attach the bow to a length of ribbon to make the tails. Ugh, the struggle is real. I dovetail the ends. I cut some scrap ribbon in half to cover the wire in the middle there. And I glue down the ends. I curl the berry sprigs around the skewer and hot glue them in the center of the shamrock. Then I'll hot glue the ribbon on top. And finally, I'll pop in the lights. Ta-da! There you have it.
I hope you enjoyed today's video. I really had fun making this shamrock. I want to thank Sarah and Zena for hosting today's collaboration. Please be sure to check out their channels. You'll find those as well as the playlist in the description box. You'll also find the rules for the gift away and all of my supplies. I wish you all a very happy St. Patrick's Day and best of luck to you. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.